I believe that all art has as its ultimate goal the union between the material and the spiritual, the human and the divine. I believe that to be the reason for the very existence of art. Of all time, because people communicated through bodily movement before anything. I mean, art and, and moving your body. I mean, dancing is really showing your, express, your emotions through bodily movement. And I think it's a wonderful thing to get out on the floor and just feel free and do what you want and just let it come out. And when I dance, I feel, I mean, I really feel it, and I just feel free, and I do what I feel. And uh, dancing will never disappear. I mean, it's instinct. It's God. It's uh, escapism. It's getting away from everything and just moving your body and letting all the tension and pain out and just having a good time. Believe in yourself. Study the greats and become greater. Be a scientist, no matter what. I don't care if the whole world is against you or tease you or say you're not going to make it. Some of the greatest men that have made a mark on this world are treated like that. You know, you know you're not going to do it. You're not going to get anywhere. They laughed at Walt Disney. They made jokes of Henry Ford. They said he was ignorant. He didn't have a college degree. These are men that shaped and changed our culture custom, the way we live. And I think God plants those seeds through people on the earth to bring some bliss and escapism and joy, some magic. How do you write a song? How do I write a song? Well, you if I sat down with this piano, you don't try. what would happen? If I sat here and played some chords, whatever, and say I'm going to write the best song I've ever written, nothing happens. Now I remember when I when I wrote Billie Jean, I was riding in my uh, car down Ventura Boulevard. All I said to myself beforehand, I want to write a song with a great bass hook, you know, and um, um, and I just let it go, really. And then several days later, you know. <clears throat> You know, the whole Where did thing, that come from? From above. The dance as well? Yeah, same thing. Yeah. How do you do it? Can you show me how you do it? Oh, boy. Come on, just get up I'm and show shy. me. Oh, come on, just show me. Go just show on. me. Just show me. Show me um, what you do. Teach me. Okay, uh... Oh, boy. You're putting me on the spot now. Come on. See, now people are discovering something about me. I'm really shy. I'm embarrassed. Okay, you're shy. Just get up and show me. <laughs> um... Okay. What's going through your mind when you're dancing? Not thinking. Thinking is the biggest mistake a dancer could make. You have to feel. You become the bass, you become the fanfare, you become the clarinet and the flute and the strings and the drums. So you're almost the physical embodiment yeah, of the music. absolutely. Well, the songwriting process is, is something that's very difficult to explain because it's very spiritual. It's, uh, you really just in the hands of God and it's as if it's been written already. That's the real truth. As if it's been written in its entirety before you were born and you're just really the source through which the songs come. Really, because they just fall right into your lap in its entirety. You don't have to do much uh, thinking about it. And I feel guilty having to put my name sometime on the songs that I, I do write them. And I compose them, I write them, I, I do the scoring, I do the lyrics, I do the melodies. But still, it's, uh, it's the work of God. Because I like to just feel everything. I don't, I don't like people looking at me like, unless I'm on stage. 
And so um, all the lights were off. When I was very little, around 10 years old, I used to go on these tours with my brothers, the Jackson Five, and I'd hear these crazy stories that <laughs> these girls would claim my brothers had relationships with them, which they didn't, and that they were going to have their children. And I thought that to be so strange and so crazy. And then, a couple of years later, there was this girl named Billie Jean who used to stand outside my gate, and I would drive outside the gate, and she would say, here's the keys to our car. And she would say, here's the keys to the front door. And she would say that I'm actually the father of her child, which never, ever happened. And that inspired the song, because the chorus goes, Billie Jean is not my lover. She's just a girl who claims that I am the one, but the kid is not my son. So I guess that's how that happened. For instance, uh, when creating the song, uh, Billie Jean... I was riding in my car and it started with the bass lick again, which goes and on top of that I hear the chord then the melody she was more like a beauty queen from a movie scene I said oh my but do you mean I am the one and the lyrics the strings the chords, everything comes at that moment, like a gift that is put right into your head. And that's how I hear it. You just start singing the lyrics? Absolutely. When I said Billie Jean is not my lover, I didn't think about it. It just came. It all dropped in my lap at once. And I loved it. So I ran, uh, I drove fast home and I got on the microphone and put things down. Then I went into the studio, got the magicians over, and gave them all their parts. And that's how, I mean, that's how uh, that was created. Same thing with, you know, other songs that I create. Michael, did the real Billie Jean know the song was about her, and did you ever hear from her about it, Amy? <laughs> um, there's a girl named Billie Jean, but, uh... It's not about that Billie Jean. Billie Jean is kind of anonymous. It represents a, a lot of girls who used to, uh, they used to call them groupies <laughs> in the 60s. They would hang around backstage doors and any band that would come to town they would have a relationship with. And uh, I think I wrote this out of uh, experience with my brothers when I was little. There were a lot of Billie Jeans out there. Every girl claimed that uh, their son was <laughs> related, you know, to one of my brothers. I feel very thankful and blessed to have the ability to do what I'm able to do, because it could have easily have been someone else. It didn't have to be me, but I was chosen, and I love it, and I cherish it, and I think it's a wonderful feeling. No, I wrote that in the, at my house in the game room. I guess I was playing some pinball or something. And the song just popped in my head. And uh, I think I ran upstairs, put it on tape. Uh -huh. And uh, it became Liberian Girl. Same thing with, we are the world, we are the children. I, I didn't really, I mean, I don't know why those words came. They just came as that. Uh -huh. We are the ones to make a brighter day, so let's start giving. I didn't think about it, just, you know, just come, just come. That's one of the hardest uh, questions to answer because uh, it just comes. Songs just kind of create themselves, so I don't want to dissect it really. It just, I let it happen. I wanted something that the whole world could sing. All right. Everybody down to the ground. Randy would, uh, was playing the piano one day. This group. I said, it's bad. I love it. I said, what is that? He said, oh, it's nothing. I said, it is something. <laughs> and so um, I just started singing to it. And it just came about. I don't know where it came from, it just came about, and uh, it just comes, I don't know where it comes from, God, I say, really.
Chicken running out too. I mean, the lyrics came with when I created the melody. Anna, which is about you know girls hanging around backstage and things. And another song I wrote called Billy Jean. Let me take one at a time. Approximately when did you write Dirty Diana? I wrote Dirty Diana. Uh, I think it was '86 around 85, 86, and I released it on the Bad Album. And uh, Billie Jean, when did you do Billie Jean and on what album? <laughs> Billie Jean was on the Thriller album, and I, I had written that one in 1982, I think. Yeah, 82. Have you ever used gunshots or police sirens on any work that you've done in the past? Yes. What uh, song or song <laughs> did you use? Police sirens and gunshots. Are. A song I, I wrote called uh, "Smooth Criminal," and uh, I use um, sirens, and, you know, machine gun sound. It was about Chicago in 1940, so it was appropriate. <laughs> Approximately when did you write the song "Smooth Criminal"? I wrote Smooth Criminal around the, the same year I wrote Dirty Diana. Which was approximately? Um, I think it was 80, 85, 86, somewhere around there. For what album? For the Bad Album. I love Dirty Diana. That's, That's one, of my, so? one of my favorites. Why? Because it's, it's, uh, it's a life story of uh, a groupie. Um, I hate to say the word groupie, but that's what it is. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's something that I've experienced and a lot of people who grow up on the road, like me. I mean, I don't, I don't remember not performing. Mm -hmm. And, uh... Do you feel this? And can you tell us when you started composing music? Probably since the age of seven. And can you tell us how old you are when you had your first uh, song published? That I wrote myself? Yes, sir. Fifteen. Thank you. Tell us approximately, Mr. Jackson, how many songs you've written to date? In general, a couple of hundred. <laughs> and approximately how many of those songs have been released to the public? About um, 50. 50, 60. Well, like, like I always say, I'm, I'm a person of the arts. I love the arts very, very, very much. And uh, I'm a musician, I'm a director, I'm a writer, I'm a composer, I'm a producer. And I love the medium. I love film very, very much. I think it's the most expressive of all the art mediums. The sculptor can sculpt, the painter can paint, but they capture a moment. They freeze time with the moment. And film, you live the moment. You live, you have the audience for two hours. You can have their brain, their mind, and you can take them any place you want to take them. You know, and that idea is mesmerizing to me, that you can have the power to do that, to move people, to change their lives. And that's where you marry the music and the visual together. And that's what excites me so much about film and the future, because I love motion picture very, very much. The melody just came, just hearing uh, the music and the whole composition in itself. And uh, the, first, the first part, I knew I wanted to talk the, the verses like a rat as she walked into the room. I knew right then and there there was something different about this girl. The way she moved, her hair, her face, her lines, divinity in motion. So that's pretty much the verse. Then it goes into the B section, which leads up to the chorus. And it goes, the chorus, dum, 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 dum. I never knew, but I was walking the line. Come go with me, I said I had no time. Then it goes, it builds to, um, from the B section to the chorus. Um, the lyrics are, 
I never thought that I would knock on the phone. My baby cried, she left me standing alone. She's so dangerous. Yes, so dangerous. And that's pretty much how it happened, just hearing those chords which inspired the melody. What? I never knew, but I was walking the line. Come go with me, I said I had no time. I forgot the rest of the lyrics. Uh, when I was in Moscow on the Dangerous Tour, and it was just a strange, eerie, lonely time for me. Outside my hotel was just a sea of faces of, of fans chanting and screaming. But I was inside my room and I felt so all alone, like I was like the last person on the planet. And in the song I say, how does it feel when you're alone and you're cold inside? Uh, and I say it's like a stranger in Moscow. And that's pretty much how I felt. And the people were lovely. They were some of the nicest people I've ever met. And the concert was very successful. But um, that day, I just felt this different feeling and the song Stranger in Moscow came to me. So that how, that's how that was written. Uh, Stranger in Moscow. I wrote that in Moscow when the lyrics are totally autobiographical. It's, um, when you hear lines like, here abandoned in my fame, Armageddon of the brain. And at the time, that's... Uh, on the last tour when we were in Moscow, that's, that's really how I felt. And it, it kind of created itself, it fell into my lap because that's how I was feeling at the time. Just uh, all alone in the hotel, it was raining and, and I just started writing it. I call it my giving tree because it inspires me. Uh, I love climbing trees in general. But this tree I love the most because I climb up high and I look down on its branches and it gives me, I just love it, so many ideas. I've written so many of my songs in this tree. I wrote um, Heal the World in this tree, Will You Be There, Black or White, um, Childhood.